Thank you, Madam Chair, and I appreciate your uh, holding this hearing and the opportunity and giving me the opportunity to speak this morning. Let me first uh, acknowledge the workers who came from all over the country to participate in today's hearing. I know some of you took a great risk in coming here. Your presence and personal stories are invaluable to this discussion. The issue of workplace safety is very personal to me. Before being elected to Congress, I was a lining cutter at Seifer Clothing Company in Rock Island, Illinois. I'm one of the lucky ones to leave that job with all ten of my fingers. It was very dangerous work. The timing of this hearing is particularly relevant, not only because statistics tell us that 16, 16 workers die every day from work-related injuries, but also because next Monday, April 28th, marks the 20th annual Workers' Memorial Day where we honor those who have lost their lives or were injured at their jobs. April 28th also commemorates the creation of the Occupational Safety and Health Administration. Since 1970, OSHA has been a driving force in improving workplace safety and health conditions across this country. However, the Bush administration has sought to stifle that progress by downsizing OSHA, favoring employer volunteer, voluntary programs over real enforcement. A weakened OSHA has real life or death consequences for American workers. One such worker is Cintas washroom employee Eliezer Torres Gomez, whose son Emmanuel will testify this morning. Mr. Torres Gomez died March 6, 2007 in Tulsa, Oklahoma when he reportedly was dragged by a conveyor belt into an industrial dryer. He was trapped in temperatures of 300 degrees for more than 20 minutes. I had the honor of a meeting Emmanuel last April and was appalled by the total lack of responsibility Cintas took for this accident and the way this company treated the Torres Gomez family. Cintas, the largest uniform supplier in North America, blamed Mr. Torres Gomez for his own death. Yet Cintas was aware of the safety issues with the machinery and even encouraged employees to climb on top of the equipment to fix jams that slowed down operations. Moreover, OSHA's uh, Directorate of Compliance issued a special interpretation letter in 2005 alerting employers, workers, and inspectors about the need for special guarding around robotic laundry shuttles. Tragically, OSHA did not act at the Tulsa plant, and now one year later, Cintas workers are still in danger. Safety inspectors found the same upgrade unguarded machines at Cintas facilities in Ohio, in Washington, in Alabama, California, and most recently my home state of Illinois. Something must be done to allow OSHA to deal with hazards corporate-wide. Right after Mr. Torres Goma's accident, our subcommittee asked OSHA to conduct an immediate nationwide investigation resulting in a historic $2.8 million citation against Cintas involving 46 illegal hazards and 42 willful, let me repeat that, willful violations. Sadly, Cintas is not the only example of corporate disregard for workers. We have a real problem in American industry. Employers are exposing their workers to serious health and safety hazards and defying worker safety and health regulations. As I hope will be revealed by our witnesses this morning, we must strengthen OSHA and give it the tools it needs to conduct corporate-wide investigations, enforce safety and health regulations at multi-site corporations, and, mi and mitigate hazards so that companies like Cintas are held accountable for the safety of their employees. We also need to build a corporate culture in this country that puts our workers first. Last year, Chairman Wolsey and I, along with Senator Ted Kennedy, introduced the Protecting America Workers Act, which amends OSHA to cover more workers, increases penalties, and strengthens protections and accountability. I hope as we move forward in the discussion of workplace safety, we can consider this legislation. Let me again thank you, Madam Chair. I look forward to hearing from our witnesses and working with the members of this subcommittee to ensure that our nation's workers come home safe and sound to their families every night. That is the bare minimum that any corporation and every corporation in this country owes to the workers that work so hard each and every day. And one last thing. This is very difficult work that these workers have to do each and every day. This is not easy work. We heard this at a conference call this morning. And I just have to say that from my perspective, anything that I can do to assist you, Madam Chair, on the subcommittee, not just to make sure that CENTAS, but that all corporations play by the rules, I will do that. I thank you very much, and I yield back the balance of my time.